What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? What's good? You have to say it. Oh, who do we got in the <laughs> building today? I was waiting on you. I was looking at you. I almost it? said it, but I was like, no, you have to say who it. Who do we got in the building today? What's good, Mojo? Mojo. What's My up, God. Amelia? I love it when you hear you're our first guest of 2022. Yay. I haven't seen you in forever. Happy New Year's, you guys. Happy New Year's. <laughs> Speaking on 22, Mojo, what's, what's the deal? Let us know. Anything new? Anything going on in your life? No, nothing new yet, but... um. I have some some things I want to definitely execute this year, and I'm going to go after changes. I'm going to do a lot of changes, but you'll see. That is what is, you know, there's beauty in the unspoken. Have you guys ever heard about that? Yes. A lot of beauty in that, and I've always uh, uh, gone down the path of just keeping shit on the low. Well, you're really good with that. Sorry to cut you off. You're really good with that. Your whole life, it's like very private. Very private. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. The only thing private about my life is my Instagram, but I still have like all these followers that know what, you know, what goes on in my life. Who are the closest people? So I'm learning to get more private. And let me tell you why. I'm big on like the evil eye and not even necessarily evil eye. Like in our culture, you guys know, like um, people can like even out of love and like um, from a good intent still like look at you and say something and like cast an eye on you. Right. It could be from a good place and not like malicious. But I do believe in the evil eye. And so I've been on this like hype of, you know, nonstop going to Orange Theory, like working out. It's my shit. And I haven't gone for the last two weeks because my leg like went out on me. I don't even know how. Right. Like and I'm like depressed. I was talking to my manager today and I was like, I'm pissed because I want to work out. I was like, I'm not in a good mood. I'm pissed. Like I, I drive my energy from the gym now. And so I recently like got this like pinched nerve, like sciatica and like had to go to the chiropractor, all these things. And I'm like working on healing. I don't know how it happened. I thought I was sore for the longest time. Come to find out that a chiropractor told me it's actually my my back and like it's from sitting, whatever. The point is, I'm like, okay, this is what I get for constantly posting because everybody would be like, damn, how do you do it? Posting every day. And I was like, you know, I may have just like given myself the evil eye. So now I'm like, I don't need to post anything, everything all the time anymore. I've learned. And that's what I'm like focusing on is how to not necessarily be like sneaky and private, but just there's a reason why like our day to day activities, we don't need to be posting it all day, every day. Well, let me can I just say something? You guys remember this. Not everything needs to be shared because not everybody wants to see you win. And I I'm just saying I'm going to again, leave it at that. But it's true. I I'm doing the opposite. Says the girl that made a second Instagram. And yeah. it's still public. Right. But I'm not <laughs> posting like person and it says personal on my bio. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I made that because I'm differentiating my business account from my personal You're account. separating But I'm still two. posting, like, what I want people to see versus I'm actually analyzing, like, should I post this now? In a way, like, that's how I'm thinking. There is a lot of beauty in leaving things, again, uh, like, not really to everybody's... Like, you don't want to show everything to everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we are... You've been on the podcast several times, Mojo, and there's a lot of things we say and we're very open on this platform, right? But there's a level of like having a personal life and some privacy that will do you justice in the long run, I feel like, you know? Whether it be like your endeavors, what you're doing, like... Okay, so back to what Mojo said. I'm going to just lay it on the table, bro, okay? Because I felt some type of way about this, and I wanted to get you guys' idea, okay? So you guys know about the, the guy named Shalizi, right, on Instagram? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Shalizi is a, uh, a manager. He manages, like, some of the biggest stars in hip-hop, in the music space, and I'm sure he's um, doing several different ventures. He's Afghan, you know, a young guy just doing it, bro. And when I saw him... I I got so much inspiration because he is from California. He is somebody who's Afghan doing something that not a lot lot of Afghans are into. You know what I mean? Getting in the music space. And he really did the damn thing, right? Very successful guy. And over the last couple of years, I've seen our own people. I kind of hate on the guy, you know? And I'm sure the people that I'm seeing that are hating on him, don't even know him, let alone have had like a conversation with the guy 
ever, That's right? That's normally the case. That's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. And I've seen this in several different com- communities, not just the Afghan community. I've seen it in the black community. Um, haven't really seen it in the Latino community. Latinos, you hold it down, baby. That's what's <laughs> up. But um, I've seen it a lot. And a lot of people, so recently he, when the situation in Afghanistan, which is still an ongoing issue in Afghanistan, prayers out to Afghanistan, our people down there. Um, he posted a GoFundMe to help um, with relief efforts in Afghanistan, right? And he generated, I don't know, close upwards to half a million dollars, which is amazing. Shout out to you, bro. Um, And a lot of people started to hate on him, right? And it was a lot of Afghans, bro. I would see stories of people that I know and I'm close, kind of close with that would be like, where's the money going, Shalizi? You know what I'm saying, bro? And it, it... it struck me, it struck a nerve with me because I'm like, bro, he doesn't need to do this. The dude is made. He doesn't need any handouts from anyone. Self-made, got it from the mud, did something that nobody's doing. Why are you hating on him? And then I love that a couple of days ago, he listed out a whole transaction spreadsheet, baby. And he didn't even need to do that. Exactly. Sometimes, he didn't even... sometimes it comes down to that. Just to shut people up, you got to really pull the receipts. I feel you. The worst part is that it's our their own kind doing it to our kind. He's trying to help our kind. Like, come on. No, but he... Sorry, he uh, he started the GoFundMe saying uh, the first hundred thousand is on him, and he that's how he started it. And because of that, you know, he took the first step. He wanted everybody's help. It was successful. Now, after all of that, I mean, it's there. There's no reason for the guy to try to like come up on a GoFundMe like scam or whatever. He's very successful emotionally himself. You know, like so are people saying he's like scamming. Of course I, they I are. Just They're assuming. Afghans. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no offense, but it's my people. I love my people. But that's where we lack a lot of, you know, it's, I'm just tired of it. Our own kind hates on us. And that happens in like, I've seen it in a multitude amount of like communities out there. It's not just, and it's like, why do you do it to your own people? You yeah. feel me? Like the, we, I, I find support from damn near every single other ethnicity and race except for my own and i'm just like bro why instead of uplifting each other helping each other and like really vouching for people i get it a lot of people don't think like these bigger like you know these tech companies these bigger companies who use fundraising and like charity for like tax purposes i get it but i'm almost positive the guy is not doing it for those reasons i think he knows his roots and where he comes from and he's just trying to do his part and he knows he has a following to do that yeah dude can just hold a concert or an event for just his group let alone marshmallow one of the biggest artists ever Ever, one of the most highest paid artists in the 2020s, let alone hold a concert and generate all that money and pocket himself, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It There's just hurts no, me. There's um, no just like positivity, I feel like, in today's day and age, no matter with what stance you take. And I mean, again, we are Afghan, right? Shout out to our Afghans, our homeland. Like, obviously, we all want the best for it. But <laughs> if you take a look at like what you see in terms of our own Afghans not wanting to see others succeed, like that shows you why our people aren't progressing. It shows you why we're so behind, right? Like granted, we are lacking resources, but like if you look at like years historic, right? Like we've never been able to stand our own. And so it's actually not normalized when you do see a successful Afghan, right? Who is doing all these great things for themselves, their family and and so successful in the industry. Like our own Afghans don't see that as a positive light, as a a form of representation, more so, oh, like it's fraud. It's like, oh, oh, you know, like just like a form of hate. And it's like, you see that more, you do see the positive side, right? There's a lot of amazing positive Afghans out there who are influencers, who are, who have establishments and like can, can speak and be advocates, but there's so much negativity too. And it's like, to your point, it's across all, I see it across all races too. Like, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, dude is defying all odds in a space where not a lot of us are in, right? Yeah. And then, like, I kid you not, bro, if bro wasn't posting, like, his Lambos, his Ferraris, his nice-ass house, mashallah, all the wet-ass things that he's doing, nobody would hate on him. Nobody would give a yeah. There's millions of people that started to go fund me that are Afghan. They're not getting hated on. Why? Yeah. Because when people see something that they want or would love to have and they can't have it, mm-hmm. the first thing it is is, like, let me try to dismantle this guy's integrity and yeah. find out what's on the bottom of this story, you know what I'm Well, saying? that's essentially human nature, right? Like, exactly. I get the human nature aspect yeah. in terms of people, like, immediately having this Envy, jealous rage, jealousy. right? Like, I get it. 
But even if you were to eliminate all that and at least just focus as people, we need to focus on the bigger picture and understand the message behind what he's doing. And for one second in your life, remove your selfishness in terms of your general hate and actually look at the fact that this dude or anybody else is literally trying to help. There's a bigger cause here. Why are you trying to drag people, right? And this goes, it's not just Afghanistan. I mean, he could have easily been posting about any other country trying to help someone, right? Like people need to just look at it as a form of, bro, people have platforms. They're trying to help. Let them help. Right. What they do, like that's on them. Like have pure intentions in my opinion. I don't know. And to your, you know, like there's like all this like controversy around like, no matter what side you're on, they're going to find ways to, to attack your attack your opinion, attack your stance, your political views, whatever. So it's just I'm not surprised that that's what happened to the point where it caused him to eventually po post general, like actual transactions. But it's really sad that this is the day and age we live in. You know, it's just, it's comes that negativity comes across everything. Well, Joe, how do you feel about pride? How do you guys feel about pride? Because <laughs> in my eyes, pride is the devil. You feel me? A lot of people have too much. Shout out to J. Cole. He made it in a perfect song, Pride is the Devil. Like a lot of people have this sense of like pride in, in themselves where they don't want to let it go. And it bleeds on to like every one of their relationships. Even when you give them cold hard facts, they'll still stand on what they believe yeah. in. I can literally name you five people right now. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> it's the world. Yeah. You feel me? No, I know. Pride is an interesting thing. How do you feel about it? I mean, you guys said it perfectly. I... I'm trying not to comment on certain things because it, I don't want to go down a neg negative. No, don't but, even. Yeah, no, yeah. but I, I see it. When I look at certain things, I'm like, the most out of it, I'll be like, oh, man, I wish that was my bag. You know, and that, like <laughs> the that's, bag. That, <laughs> no, for example, it's yeah. everyone's saying when they see her back. <laughs> Literally, no, bro. <laughs> no, it's not even like that anymore. But no, you guys said it perfectly. I. Like, bro, if you it's think about it, evil. Everything. people die over pride. Like, dudes get into fistfights at bars over somebody they don't even know. Yeah. So people are just like, in LA, people are like dying over like little dumb shit right now because it's like a war zone over there. You feel me? And sometimes, like now, early on in my life, before I like matured and like came into realization of who I was and comfortable with who I was, I felt like I had this like, um, this feeling of needing to show out and like nah bruh you need to feel me you feel me yeah. or if someone tries to test me i'd have to show them how i feel and show them that nah i ain't soft you're not gonna bully me or or do these things to me and like now i'm starting to realize like none of that really matters because that shit is the devil bro let me tell you i think it also has to do with like your age i growing up had a lot of pride like in a, in a sense where i wouldn't you even did. i wouldn't ask for help right like I've learned to be so much more vulnerable and I appreciate, I have a new perspective on life in terms of like how much more I appreciate things by just being genuine and like actually saying, no, I'm not okay. Right. And like putting my pride aside, but like there was a point in my life where I literally like would retaliate. Right. Like it would hurt me so much to the point where I'd be like, it's my pride getting to me. Like I did, I wouldn't want it to be the only person that knew it all had all these things, but it literally got me nowhere. Like sometimes it's okay to just, look the other way and be like, it's that person, not me. And we talked about this in previous podcasts, like even with insecurities and stuff, sometimes it's okay to just be like, not today. Like it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know, you start to, when you grow up, you start to realize like what's worth it. And you have yeah. like, you gauge the levels of importance in yeah, certain aspects. Yeah. I just don't care anymore. You know, I'm, yeah. that's where it's I'm an easy at. way to put it for I real. Just, you know, I'm like, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. If anything, I need to continue proving things to myself. Like that, that's where I'm at. Yeah, there was a time. Actually, no, I never really cared for pride in that sense. I just kind of went with the flow. I don't like altercation. You know, I just wasn't yeah. that person. And I think, you know, being more prideful, you can, I don't know, maybe not. But Sometimes like bump it's heads more, more prideful to walk away and be the bigger person, actually, versus... You know, like having a fight in a 24-hour fitness par parking lot. That's okay. what I'm saying. Bro, like it's <laughs> shit gets ugly on the hoop course. I ain't gonna lie. You feel me? It's hard to put that pride aside, though. Yeah, yeah sometimes that's, it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you kind of just have to remind people that, hey, <laughs> just because I don't care doesn't mean I won't handle it. Exactly. Yeah, straight exactly. up. There's, there's, you have to gauge the levels, you feel me? If someone's yeah. in your face, but I punch you in the face, <laughs> then you got to show a little bit of your pride, you know what I'm saying? But, like... 
instances where like even back then like I was the type of person honestly where early on like I was a snapper I like mm -hmm. to snapchat aspects of my life stuff that I was doing nice little scenery of my car in the background type <laughs> shit right and then I started to realize like that none of that really matters bro and I find way more peace in knowing that like this is more so for me, like Mojo, right? You had an opportunity and there's been instances on podcasts where we'll tell our goals and what we're going to do. But your first thing you said is you're going to find out. You're going to see soon. Why is that? Because you don't have an ego. You don't have that pride to be like, let me tell the whole audience, all however many of you that watch this podcast, what I'm doing because it's important. Because in the grand, grand scheme of things, a lot of people have this like, this hero, um, like mentality, right? Which is good. You have to be the main character in your own story. And I've said that in the past, but in the grand scheme of things, when you take yourself too seriously and you make yourself feel so important, you're just a small little ant in the billions of people on this earth. And I hate people that, I don't hate, let me watch my words. I don't like people who need to show you and tell you how awesome and what they're doing is so grandiose and great. But it's weird what to me. if you also are the type of person who you're not doing it for people, you're doing it for yourself? Exactly. Because, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Wrong with no, but like I get it. Like you don't want to essentially. There's. A, I feel like there's a line between wanting to keep things private, which we should, right? In certain aspects, like I said, I'm learning to do that. But there's also a sense of like we don't have to necessarily hold back if we want. If we've worked hard for something and we have our accomplishments and we want to share it, it's not always for the people. Of course, with social media, it's always to flaunt. But like, in but why general, are you? Po why would no, you post oh, but, it then? But myself, I'm saying it's for yourself. Though. Yeah, but, but you every, keep it in your camera roll. I know, <laughs> to but yourself. It's, that's true. But it's you're showing your it account. To, no, no, but no. you're showing you're doing it to show others, right? Yeah, but like people can look because at it because it was to, like, to inspire others. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It I know. Depends. I see you. I know yeah. there's a way to do it without being arrogant. No, yeah, no, for sure. and, I get and that. you don't do it in a way where you're showing off. Yeah, I, 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 sh I ain't shit. That's what I mean. I'm very aware. I'm aware that I ain't shit. But and you like, don't also like Mojo okay, said. Okay, but don't say that because I am. <laughs> I know I am. But like you know what I mean. Like I'm not in my own mind. I don't think I'm the one and only. But there's I a am. lot of people that do feel yeah. like, that, and that's Too where many. you're on a whole different yeah. direction. And I don't want to compete with that exactly. because I don't care to. I'm not going to waste my time on it. I honestly, there are times when I've posted a certain picture and i swear i get anxiety yeah. and i Me go too. back and Me i delete too. it Me too, bro. and it's like an hour later and like damn near you know my four followers saw it already excuse my language um but i'll still go back and delete it because i'm like i don't want to come off a certain way it's going to be pulled in so many different directions because that's just how people are now so that also has a you know part of why I'm I'm gonna be more private like I deleted a lot of things out of my Instagram I'm gonna pretty soon remove a lot of people that I don't you know kind of interact with like that and then I'm like what about the future when I have a following myself then I'm gonna have to be in the limelight exactly and I'm just scared I'm I don't, I'm scared of people's intentions that's nowadays what, I'm like scary. paranoid mm -hmm. and like I know I'm not this big shot where I have thousands and millions of followers but even like in your you know within your circle like you said like we have you know our close friends and family that show less support than strangers right like you never really know deep down someone's intention towards you it can come again sometimes most times be malicious but sometimes still like you know, have a toll on your energy. And I, I don't want that. Protect I'm with it. Mo in terms of like, I don't care anymore. Like I can care less about the likes, the views that I'm getting. I do it. It's a law of detachment, right? I do the things and post the things that I love and I want to see myself on my own accounts. But personally, like aside from like the evil eye thing, I'm just scared nowadays. Bro, I kid I'm you scared. not. Okay. So on TikTok, right? We have a uh, TikTok uh, for the podcast. And uh, recently, um, Neil and I posted a response to videos just to get exposure for people to look at your, yeah, your page, like right? Yeah, like the debut? Yep, exactly. Oh, nice. So, like, we, there was somebody that posted a, a TikTok on um, a post in regards to this mountain called El Capitan. It's this big mountain that Alex Honnold and a lot of other free soloists, like, they climb this, like, huge rock with no, no ropes or anything, right? Mm -hmm. And we commented on that post saying... And to think people free solo this, right? With a little like scared emoji, because imagine how scary is it? This is like the biggest thing ever. If you one slip and you're dead, right? I posted that and it's such a, like a, 
simple, right, comment, right? And literally, it's blowing up. It has like 2,000 likes right now, right? Every minute you refresh, like people are liking it and responding to it. And I'm looking at the response and there are people literally so angry that we put people instead of person. Oh, stop. And I'm like, no, no, no. I people because there's more than one person that free soloed this and people like the comments are like why would you say people when it's one person that is like and they're <laughs> really aggressively mad about this and I'm sitting there like no matter what you do no matter of what you say people are always going to spin the narrative and get angry or feel some type of way about damn near nothing and yeah. it's scary. Yeah. No, I'm not even saying it from that point of view. I'm more so like scared of people doing like like some. Oh, you're talking some, about some like shit. scary cat, that, what was witchy that thing? Cat, stuff. Yeah. 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 Creepy on a, you know, behind Creepy the scenes, Anna. like psychotic type shit. Like I don't trust people well, in you're today's old, day and age. How do you age. feel as a, as a girl? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people are going to come for me and be like, why do you talk about guys? But as a girl, do you guys feel safe going um, like out now and like going alone to places yeah, and like to clock. the mall? That's what I'm talking about. I carry, I carry. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> Yo, I no, wish you did. I told you. Guns. Yeah. I mean, do, yeah, like uh -huh. and a lot of people, bro, <laughs> if you think about it, like I got a Glock. I wish a lot of people like don't post about the reality of being like a girl. Like recently I saw on TikTok scary. too that a girl, an Instagram influencer who's being tracked on the, the Apple AirPod tracker. Yes, you saw that. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I saw it too. Oh, and it's the like- The little, um, the tracker device, right? It was in her car or something. Yep, exactly. Yes. And she just found out and she, it's like, I feel so, and like I talked to my girl about this and I talked to all my closest loved ones, especially the women in my life, I'm like, be smart. Don't go get gas at night. And these are very regular things we've known for so long, but it's just to be hyper aware about your surroundings because more and more I'm seeing, bro, that it's getting less and less safe. And I've had this conversation with my girl and she was like, Adis, you're scaring me out of life. And I'm like, no, bro, I'm just trying to make you aware. Like why go to at 10? My mom says the same thing. Tell Sadaf that. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. Like, you guys are strong women that can, you don't want to live your life in fear. And I'm not saying to live your no, life in fear. I know what you mean. You're protecting us because you clearly see is what, what's happening in the world. People are getting away with, I mean, might as well say murder. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, people, it's just a scary time. People don't care anymore. People are desperate because of the pandemic, because of funds. People are trying to find out the easiest and quickest way to make some bucks. They don't care who they hurt. Along the way, lives have been lost because of these careless things. And it's just terrifying. Yeah, to answer your question, I'm mortified. Good. Again, be limited to what the hell you post because now you got creepos following you and knowing where you're at because you post that you're tagged eating here or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. It's just, it's a different time. And they try to figure that out your- That poor girl, what happened? I guess she was just being tracked by like some. The scary part was that it was on her own Apple device. So like her phone kept How? like alerting her saying that, oh, you are being tracked. Or That's something. a good part. And That's unknown a good devices. Feature, yeah. I mean, good that she w caught on to it. It, it. it basically was like, oh, your phone was like tracked here or someone's it trying says, to put track into your phone. When you get that alert and I've seen it on uh, my cousin's phone. Mm -hmm. So when you have an Apple AirTag around you, whether it be yours or somebody else's, it will say that you are being like uh, tracked. There is an Apple AirTag around you yeah. in your vicinity, oh. and that's a I, I, that's I commend Apple for doing that. But also, I'm like, dude, I don't think you should have made it that accessible. I and saw that easy. somebody really on TikTok. This father put a AirTag on his five year old daughter's shoe inside because she's going to preschool, and like he just wanted to make sure she's well, like, you never know. like I get it, like. Ugh, with it's children, like it's... God be with all the children. But with that girl, basically, it was telling her like, oh, they followed you to Target. They followed you to Walmart, whatever. And she's like, what the hell? It's like whatever there. And then she goes and she, she goes and checks like in her car and stuff and ended up finding an Apple AirTag there. So that's pretty sketch. I don't know. It's sus. Another good thing is, is share your, I don't know how we even got to this topic, but share your locations with your loved ones because if nobody knew this or some people didn't know this, now that your even if your phone is off, they'll still it'll still be trackable. Really? Yeah. So yeah. if it's powered wow. off, I saw that the people like that yeah right? the people that can track you can that's it. in your like locations or whatever. I mean, what is it called? Find Sharing. my find Sharing. my friends. Mm -hmm. find my, yeah. yeah. 
so they can still see where it's at, which I love that feature. Yeah, me too. Because w even if you lose your phone or somebody steals it, they turn it off. I mean, if they I'm, break it. Well, <laughs> can they? I don't Does know about still that. Track it? Does it track the pieces? I mean, I oh, hope God. so. But in all honesty, bro, it is a weird, tough time. And I like the whole tracking and making sure you're on your P's and Q's because it does ensure that there is a backing to where like, look, bro, if one person is not answering your text, at least I can reach out to somebody else and be like, well, hey, do you know their location? Yeah. Hey, can you go check up? You're closer to them than I am. Yeah. Let's go, you know, yeah. follow I up. Have, it's a gray area for me with the amount of <laughs> technology that's involved in our wallets and our obviously on our phone or trackers like I love it it's a good thing but it also freaks me out in terms of like how much I'm in a data breach and the amount of spam and texts that I get every day in emails and like sociopaths that are on my emails and like I don't even like the wallet feature on my iPhone because sometimes I'm like bro it's so easy to hack into anything someone can my credit uh, credit card recently got hacked and shout out to my bank because they're super on it and it, it flags it that's another it's like creeps me out how they know me because it's in a data breach like they, they're like Mila didn't make this transaction they know right and it was local yep. so it could have like normally I get an alert if I'm out of state and like I use my card it'll be like is this you but like they knew it was I me mean, it was weird yeah so it shows on I don't know if you guys can see this but it says privacy report right mm -hmm. and it says in the last seven days Safari has prevented oh, zero trackers to. from profiling your IP address is also hidden from known trackers and websites you visit right yeah. so yesterday I, I go on Safari right and on the front page of your Safari it should say like your privacy report and you can change how customize how your your background looks and stuff and I have this on number one it said your privacy report reported 34 sightings of your ip address and being like, oh, tracked shit. and it shows literally from what website is tracking you google like yeah. every website world star because all of these companies <coughs> are are selling your information you know what I cookies know. are right yeah. you know when you go on a website and it says accept all cookies <clears throat> yeah you're accepting all of your shit to be distributed to every one of I their know. their people who buy they want they purchase this off of these it, websites it happened to me that's what i'm going through right exactly. now exactly i'm i literally yeah. got a what was the mail what, i got mail from somewhere some important documents and it says that you're now in a data breach because People have gotten a hold of your information. It's very easy and accessible to find the general information about somebody that someone needs to kind of pursue anything. And that freaks me out in today's day and age. There's also like this app that my cousin told me to download where you just upload your receipts, your receipts, anything, you get points and you get free Amazon cards and like all these gift cards, all these things. And then I was like, why do people need our receipts? Like why do people... Bro, like, have you thought that's a, data? Yeah, because data. they want to see what people buy. Consumer, how they consume. So they can add, make ads, mm -hmm. and it's like it's too much. And bro. also, have and you they, ever? They literally, sorry, they like rule you in by like, oh, take a picture, get a ten dollar gift card, and you're like, oh, all I need to do, I go buy groceries, I upload the receipt. But then I was like, what? Is, why do they? What are they doing with all these? Who receipts? is watching these? Who needs these receipts? Think about like, it, bro. That's what I'm have saying. you ever like? I know I have, and I don't have like raunchy shit. Like I right. don't do any of that shit. You know, I don't know about people sending nudes, doing those things and shit, <laughs> but. Like, like a lot of people download those apps that are like hidden, uh, uh, hidden uh, vault, apps. like apps, yeah, right? Yeah, Calculator uh -huh. apps and shit, right? Yeah. And I had downloaded this app to just put like personal shit in there, right? Yeah. Like, it, cause I don't care. I can give anybody my phone. I have nothing on my yeah. phone. I don't give a shit, right? But there might be sensitive information. Like, let's just say, for example, which I would never recommend putting your social security number or anything on your phone or in your wallet or anything, but shit passwords pictures of passwords shit like that so i like a couple of i think it was a couple of months ago i'm like holy shit i remember having that app right mm -hmm. so i go on the app and it's locked out the company shut down wait you're talking about my disc uh, i think so that, mine i can't get into mine you can't they sold the company it's and done what? and i re i read the terms and conditions and you know how we just accept accept the yeah. accept they have there's somebody behind there viewing all of those videos yeah. all of those pictures everything so For i sure. and they lock you out now i can't even go delete it out of their database they have it that even if you deleted me. it they it, oh. once it was there and what people love to gather nowadays is you guys shit like, like that when you're sitting i have all these monitors because of my office or whatever like do you ever feel like even everything's off and like the camera's still on. Like I For always sure. have it this is. Like, creepy feeling that I'm being watched you still. You are. Because my TV, everything has a camera, mm -hmm. right? Like my monitor, my laptop, my phone, my my camera, my personal camera. I have all these devices, right? My Apple TV. And I sometimes I'm like, bro, anyone can just get hacking 
is very easy. Come on, bro. I call one person hacking, in Russia, India. I know, no, no, no. Hacking is like insanely possible. Like anyone that can learn it and just like a few little coding thing here and there. You can literally learn how to hack, right? Let alone God knows what else. So like it, it's it terrifies me that right now I can be staring at my phone and someone else can easily just be in it. You know, like that's what I'm saying. So I don't I, I have a like a love hate relationship with where technology is at today in terms of our safety. But also our safety is at risk. Our privacy is at risk. Like we're. Technically, never alone. That's why I'm cool off those Amazon Alexas, all that. I have that Alexa. too. Bruh, they're meant, and when you buy one, you're accepting that they're gathering information. So, like, unplug that thing sometimes, you know, when you're doing your regular day to day activities, because it's literally it's listening to all your conversations, whether it's on or you think it's on or not, I and it's like gathering it. information. Okay, granted, we're not weirdos. We're not doing covert spy shit yeah. where we don't really care. But still, there's a level <laughs> no, but of like, like it's invasion. It is. I don't like that. And we're just yeah. do it. We're like getting the next iPhone, knowing that yeah. oh, shit's being tracked. Like this one, okay, there's nothing we can we can't get out of it. I know we're just in too deep. It's and wild. You know what it boils down to, bro? At the end of the day, bro, the best tracking device, the best device on this whole earth, is human beings to have goodness in them okay mm -hmm. if you're a good person and you see some weird shit going on you help the person next to you 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 say hey i know about this industry they're tracking your shit let me not let me just tell you what not to do and what you could do right same thing one of our, my boys arnev went to coachella right or no went to some not coachella some other music event right dude lost his passport okay oh no dude lost his passport and his driver's license is expired okay that's how he got into the festival and uh basically lost it went to lost and found and didn't get it he was like okay my identity is about to be stolen i gotta go make sure i go change shit right i got everything in that thing and then he he extended his flight and a couple hours later he tried one more time went there and then someone returned um, his passport a lot of people you run into a lot of weird creepy people that don't even uh, see a passport on the ground they're not gonna bro yeah. they won't even think twice they don't even want to go like throw their trash in the trash bin that's right there let alone go help somebody else that they don't know that's yeah. a good person me? yep somebody was like no he's gonna need this exactly and they did a good deed right yep. and that's what i mean i or hope they, lo they look found and we're like oh no, i can't use this <laughs> like that if he's like yeah. expired <laughs> <laughs> no use. Let me Bro, just turn and it I, I encourage a lot of people going to these festivals, especially, and I want to get your take on Coachella, especially in events like Coachella when people are in environments where things can turn a little deadly and a little weird. You know, a lot of people are partaking in alcohol, drugs, um, you know, not getting enough hydration and shit, and be the homie and be that person that really gives a helping hand and is there for somebody you don't even know, regardless if it's your immediate friend group. You feel me? Because I'm going to cut y'all. I don't know about you guys. Are you really going? I mean, you guys just hit me with some weird shit saying it's during Ramadan. Is it, it is during Ramadan? Yeah, yeah it is. One of, yeah, I mean, you can still, I'm not going, dude. You just I can't. don't have to participate in like the. But it's also. But you're also know, listening you to music. That that that's a lot And there's going to be know, naked not going. people everywhere. Yeah. No, I never said I was going. Travis was Scott's going to come out with his. Demonic energy <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Make sure you're not playing that music around Mo. She doesn't listen to him anymore. I mean, bro, I, it's commendable, bro, because mm -hmm. Mo is someone that's probably understanding that there's a little bit of a riff going on with how he treats people, and maybe like even my cousin, our cousin Billy, right? There was this time where I was slapping Tory Lanes, right, and I was like, "Look at this video, right? Remember the videos mm -hmm. I was showing you?" And uh, he was like, "Sorry, Adis, I just don't. I don't even want to listen." And yeah. I was like, Why, bro? And he was like. I just don't align with a lot of stuff that he's been doing. Yeah. You know, he shot a girl, in, allegedly shot a girl in his foot, which I, I don't believe. I, there's a lot of weird information about that. No, but he did that. You know, wait, Punk didn't it Travis recently Scott, come out that it wasn't a bullet? Supposedly. Okay. Supposedly, there's Megan's ex friend, her best friend, saying he didn't shoot her. Oh really? The yeah. Yes, the driver saying he didn't shoot her, and a whole like like operation going on to cancel him for whatever reason. What if uh, Kylie you know? shot her? Maybe, maybe, shoot maybe, her? maybe Kylie shot her. She's not allowed to say it because Chris Jenner will <laughs> Wait, but why break. would Kylie shoot him? I don't know, bro. They were Kylie might be with out the that shit. night. You uh, don't remember? <laughs> They're all in the... <laughs> You know what? I literally Bro. don't remember it. No, but I'm saying, like, there's a lot of weird shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like... I feel you, Mo, when you're saying, like, maybe let me just take a step back, really analyze the situation, and maybe... Maybe if there's more information that comes out, I might fuck no, with him again. No, uh, no, I don't think I will because a nine-year-old kid died. 
And I know, I know people are like, well, why are you taking a kid to a festival, that kind of a festival, blah, 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 blah. Or other people are like, well, how is he supposed to control what's happening? No, none of that. Okay, take all of that out of the equation. You are promoting your your fans to be aggressive, to be like, you know, fuck Watch the kid. I mean, who cares about security? Just come all the way to the stage. Of course, what's going to happen? People are going to be excited and want to get as close as possible. And then, yeah, you're standing there looking over all of this. You're telling me not not one situation stood out to you or you just didn't care or you really couldn't see. I don't buy it. Granted, it's just unfortunate because I really, really liked him. I remember that. I remember. I we, was, yeah. Granted, though, like. He was concerned, and he did show it when he was like, whoa, 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 guys. Like, is everybody all good? You know? Did he? Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of videos saying, like, but he didn't stop the concert. Of like, course. Let alone a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of money behind these concerts, millions of dollars. And he would, he, like, you can be sued for 30, 40 million, you know, because Live by Live held this event. You'd owe them all this money. And you probably think, like, look, paramedics should handle this. Multiple times in the show, he kind of like was trying to see what's going on. He looked at the ambulance, kind of concerned. But like, if I was in that show, I don't care how much I'm, money I'm losing or how much I got to lose, I would stop the show. So I feel you on that, right? But a lot of these guys are like drugged up. You know, they're That's rock true. stars. They're they're modern day rock stars. Back in Led Zeppelin days when they were huge, all of these rock bands. Everybody was getting fucked up in these mosh pits. People were getting socked. People were dying. And there wasn't this huge cancel culture movement. It was just like, it is what it is. They're rock stars. This is how... And I feel like that rock star mentality, it should be to a level. Bro. Again, about rock stars, you're not supposed to have a level. It's like, I don't give a... Actually, la, la, la. a really good... You know... I'm not gonna lie, Adis. You kind of just you know what I'm opened saying, bro? up my yeah. And it's like, bro, he was probably in, like a, in a sense where, like, and again, I'm told there is innocent people that died. I don't think for a second he would want anyone to die okay. on his terms. I disagree with how the situation was held. I disagree with the anarchy he was causing. Innocent people died, but I also, and I also disagree about how he handled it after with his like holding his head and like the that video <laughs> yeah come that, on bro that isn't pissed I mean, that pissed me off i ain't gonna lie and that's like bro do a little more bro because it's not like someone just broke their ankle type shit it's like innocent people died yeah. you feel me yeah and like that's where i'm like look bro you gotta gauge your level of like causing chaos i get it you are the modern day rock star this is why everybody likes you there's this energy in the crowd demonic energy in my opinion but uh i get it but it's levels to the shit. If you're going to go, it comes with the territory of having to take that L and owing that money to live by live or whatever for canceling your show. I don't care if they put up 50 million. If you're worth that and you're portraying this image that you're worth 100 M's or whatever, bro, take that L, bro. Yeah. If, if people are begging and it goes down to how these these events are holding yeah. like um the accountability of how they're holding these events you're setting up death chambers and death traps and like no room for breath and you're letting little kids be in these areas that are so confined bro and there's no paramedics that can genuinely get to anybody you think one paramedic is going to handle everything yeah. you should if you're putting up millions for that artist bro you should be putting millions up for medical bro mm -hmm. you should be putting millions up for all that he shit, is. bro He's, his lawsuit's huge it's huge. like in billion yeah, billions bro. already that's insane. Well, I don't know, bro. I really, sad. I really hope that moving from this, especially at these concerts and festivals, there's more of a hyper awareness of the medical part, bro. Because it's like you, these events, know damn well. If I'm a CEO and I'm holding these events, you feel me? I already know there's gonna be thousands of kids that are doing drugs. Mm -hmm. I would set up water stations, bro. But they don't give a. Yeah. It's all not. about the bottom line. How what? How much are we selling in the gate? How much are we selling in merchandise? How much are we selling in this and that? They don't give a. F just like all of these label owners don't give a. F just like all of these other industries that are just again, paying for charities. You feel me? Like these tech agencies and all these people. 
that are really not going to the right people and we can see it, right? Yeah. We got insider trader going on with Nancy Pelosi and shit, where if there is insider trading, well, let's say your your company, right, Neela? And you have the insight on your, your company that you work for, right? You know how much money is going in, you know how much money is going out, and you, you would go to jail if you spread that information to me. If you're like, look at these, yeah. my company is doing this for these stocks, you should buy in. You're going to jail. But why does Nancy Pelosi, the leader of all leaders, right, get to do all of this insider trading and make millions upon millions upon millions from us, from our money that we're giving her and nothing happens. And we know it. It's public information and we don't do anything about it. That's, yeah. It's yeah. like, bro, shit is corruption. You feel me? I kind of like the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine. That's the, million, Dude. the millions that are going in and the vaccinated are all sick again. And Bro, did you guys the see? The are fine. Did you guys see about the Robert Malone? Po so Robert Malone, um, Mojo, is a guy who basically patented the mRNA vaccine. He recently mm -hmm. went on the Joe Rogan podcast and he talked about the efficacy of the, the vaccines and like he patented the mRNA vaccine that we shot up in ourselves, right? The guy is advising on people to really do their research and he's advising on kids 12 and under not to get this vaccine. Kind of, there's a lot of misinformation going out there. There is. And then they banned the podcast. They said, YouTube says, sue ya. Yeah. We're not gonna let you post this for whatever reason. Why? Yeah. Why? Of course. Right? Because we're, suppo we're supposed to be a freedom. There's a Freedom of Information Act, right? There's a freedom of understanding things and letting... They canceled Alex Jones, the biggest conspiracy theorist ever. Doesn't even have a YouTube channel. Can't post on any platforms like Spotify. It's just this cancel. Boom. Rights going away. Boom, boom, boom. The Every company. time. Buy, get another booster shot. The company. That's what the I always company. say. I always relate it to um, prison break. It is. There's a hit bigger, bigger agenda in place that will basically literally evacuate where needed. Like, right? Literally get... Like, it shot eliminate erase it, that content anything like it's yeah. flagged within seconds if something said that they don't want you to know so i don't know i can't get in too deep into that rabbit hole just because like our poll we pages might are around and yeah. you feel me like hey but you can't know too much in today's day and age but i mean it's very clear i mean how much more program can we be let's be honest i'm not getting jabbed no more no, she I did came say on that. this podcast coming out of these about like get hey, the vaccine. You know what's crazy? Bro? I got the vaccine. No, 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 bro. And I'm gonna say I got it. I got jabbed twice. And I and I yeah. advised everybody to do real research. And I saw it, bro. My family looked at me a certain type of way. Even when I got COVID, bro, my own family treated me like I was an op, bro. Same. No, 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 bro. I remember. Nah, bro. I was public enemy number one, bro. Well, that's and I forgave we everybody. It, we had it when it no, was no, no, cool. No, 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 bro. We had when it when cool. the vaccines didn't exist. Like, but, bro, yeah, even know, then, bro, <laughs> I'm not the type of person to ever come on my family and my friends. I had friends coming at me saying I was the biggest op. Why then? Why did that dude come? around Wait, i had family telling why? me why that dude because because bro, you weren't they were vaccinated and you, because you got because COVID? i was no, 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 no. or First you of brought all, it the vaccine didn't exist when yeah. he got it it was this oh, was prior okay. to vaccine i when, was and i was as when if she got it too right yeah, and then oh. i was the reason people got it i yeah. was the reason all of a sudden and different of, cities bro and it's and like different dude cities, different and that's states. what i'm saying and that hurt me bro and yeah. i never i poker faced it all the I way know, that shit hurt me it, bro I bet. and i probably will never forget about that because had in a it, situation more serious and this is a very serious situation bro mm -hmm. if something like a damn a bigger virus comes out or someone i know my own blood gonna come from right me, bro. it's inevitable straight no, up you have literally people you telling their children not to come over like families running away from families at this bro, point and then making it seem like it was a uh like a, a a deliberate attack, attack. on like bro yeah. I'm I apologize bro. you guys don't even know if I was the one that right. gave it to you right. why and it, again I don't blame them and I don't that's why bro Abuse, I, but it's honey it's it, it be your family wait, wait, wait. but none of them even had it that's what, nobody course. even it be your own family too none of them even got it though bro, I know and but bro, you got it and guess what exactly and bro and, and then people no, one other them. person got it and I attacked that person for coming at you about it exactly because it, it's inevitable it was not purposely done bro and There's that's what no I'm saying way. and bro I get it though and, and we were the most careful 
And that's what I'm saying. And I I, I took it with grace because mm-hmm. it's not even their fault, bro. Right, right. It's what we're being it's fed. Fear. It's, it's fear. It's fear. Yeah. We're constantly in the eyes of fear, bro. They're fear mongering the shit out of us, whether it be on social media, uh, the like CNN, uh, Fox, ABC, CNBC. That's why I was like, I took the, the it took it on the chin pause. And I was like, you know what, bro? Like, it's really not their fault because at the end of the day, bro, everyone wants the best for their uh, immediate family and their loved ones, bro. You don't yeah. want to see someone go down for uh, for doing irresponsible shit. Yeah. It's a point in understanding. Again, I think we're so black and white. And I've been saying this on the podcast so much, bro. I hate that as a hu- human beings, right? There's a lot of people who are just, it's either black or... Or it's white, yep, bro. Yeah. There's no gray area and there's no level dude, of like dude, g- gauging. I've been literally telling everyone around me, even in the workplace, like we need to get comfortable with ambiguity in a gray area because yes. nothing is going to be set in stone anymore. There's no black and white system in terms of like, well, if you really look at the system, but like in terms of like life, right? Like there's no, there's right or wrong, but there's also like maybe like it's okay to be in that great unknown area because the life the route that we're taking right now in terms of our unpredicted future it really is like a i don't fucking know you feel me it's not like oh i could predict 10 years from now no i can't i literally don't know it's banged up you feel me like my uh cousin who um no no also my nephew their kids they go to school right and like there's like a trail that they have to like take to figure out who gave it to who and it's like there's no way of knowing. Like it's you have like a 20 hunt. students in class, right? Five people test positive, cut the class, like everybody go home. But like trying to do like the aftermath of like the literally the Allen from hangover math in your head on who had it, who did this person. Like there's no it's way to know. It's just a blame game, you bro. You can't, bro. It's something but that everyone can't no, escape. That's it's there. They do that because they have to know. I'm, th- I'm going to be the nice one. I'm going to say... I think they do that so they can protect the others too, so yes. they can let the others know what you're saying. Yeah, is, protect the others, go home, Cla- cancel class. That's all you can do. Yeah, it's literally mm-hmm. all you can do. Yeah. Why are you gonna sit and, there and put parents through this shit and try to make sure? Hey, to my five year old nephew, who did you sit? To, who who were you around? Just shut it all down. Recess? That's what I'm we're saying. We're all in the same common space. As if space. it's like simple. We're like, touching the same stuff. Exactly. Like, bro, there's no identifying. And here's the thing, right? Again, back to like the gray area thing, right? Because, like, if you are being reckless and you're flying to New York and then you're partying in a club yeah. when How there's fun. so many... Oh, I wish, bro. <laughs> and, like, you're you're going from there to Arizona. And I have homies that do this, bro. And I keep my distance from those homies, exactly, right? Exactly. And I'm like, bro, it's not that, like, there's a level of going at people who are damn near being reckless when somebody's doing reckless things to you the covid shit right if somebody's doing just reckless things you tend to be like look bro that's not what you should be doing let me just take a step back or something like that but if it's like pure like if my nephew bro is like living his little five-year-old life bro okay talking about dinosaurs and spider-man and batman and shit and you're going on a witch hunt to see what toy he shared with his homie and what and you're making their parents feel like they're doing bad parenting i think that's what they're doing you're literally making people fearful of what they're going to do with their own lives people don't want to be around people anymore either like what this is doing is removing our social skills like we are awkward now in front around each other like we are awkward people around each other we don't know even with family right i go somewhere and I don't know how to how to approach the person. I'm like do this. I touch yeah. you? Do I hug you? Like, and I get yeah, it. Huh? And it's more so like not about me. It's like I want to respect them, right? I want to respect their personal space and stuff. And so it's a weird time that we're living in, but it's it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I'm over yeah. it. It very <laughs> creeps me out, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, bro, I kind of miss the feeling of just hugging my aunt and my uncles yeah. and my, my pops just and my moms people. and like not like, bro, and it's it's – for a good cause, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not saying, it's like to protect your, your elders, your people that are like, um, they Bro, could be prone. I you saw f- this TikTok and it said, it's the year 2647, Moderna and Pfizer, CDC comes out with get your 647th booster. Bro, and it's like, bro, when you, when The you, CDC said don't pay your taxes, by the way. Exactly. Literally, because that's what's paying for your. Shots. Exactly. And they're getting funded billions yeah. of dollars. And again, I don't want a don't white van to pull up wow. on the outside of the podcast. And be- <laughs> it's <laughs> insanity, just, bro. The podcast just got deleted. Literally. <laughs> so, no, it's weird times. But honestly, 
personal like opinion get your vaccines whatever like it, i guess it works like right like tell that to a million cases a day of <laughs> look at that triple these. boosted people <laughs> who are testing positive and then have you seen the people who are saying which i guess it's yes that, that's just, granted it's true like they're saying oh you got covid you're positive you're very low symptoms congratulations your vaccine worked yeah tell it to the eighth vaccine they just gave me bro you know what's helpful and i'm still positive yeah do you know what they're doing what they are firing registered and i talked to a registered nurse recently mm -hmm. they're firing registered nurses that are not taking the vaccine mm -hmm. and they're so bringing stupid. back asymptomatic yeah. people who have the vaccine and test positive for yeah. covid because they're so yes. they're so short staffed that they need people I so they're firing that. people who don't have covid right but are unvaccinated but they're bringing back people who test positive for covid who are I asymptomatic know. that's so crazy. I, I literally know and i won't name drop anything but i do literally know I saw someone say that they were positive and, you know, their their management said, it's fine. If you don't have symptoms and you're vaccinated, come to work. And I'm just like, I'm going to work from home forever. I, really? I like my in-home office. Yes. Yeah. The, the sweats Dude. on underneath yeah. and then the, the work attire. The blazer on top. Yes. The blazer on top. And Bro, we still get shit done. Maybe, you know, what we should do? We should take a page out of the the you know TMZ and yeah. E News because in their in their world the TMZ and the E News none of this shit exists. Yeah, no, have I, I haven't seen shit. Okay, all of the main news news networks are like COVID variant, Delta Cron, Omicron, yeah. right? And then TMZ is like Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox just drank each other's blood after they got proposed to. <laughs> I know they got engaged and, today. Come on, bro. I think it's really wonderful. What he met him. How was that? What did he say to you? Because you gotta share it. Did Tell you have us to, what he said to her. Did you have to drink his blood to do that? To I, give him a transaction? No, no God. <laughs> I didn't even know that part. I mean, I know that they got engaged. But he does have her blood like in a diamond in or a something vial. in his or something in his necklace. They're like gothic like that. Bro, I need to find this. But Mo, you met him at Saks. I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um he was, he was he was really cool. He was with a couple of people. I just wanted to go over and, you know, whatever, be a groupie, whatever. <laughs> but I just wanted to go over there and talk to him. And he kind of put me on the spot. Oh. He asked me if I listened to his music. And I said, honestly, no. <laughs> and he's like, so I'm not going to just take a picture for or something along the lines of, so you just want to take a picture, like a cool Instagram picture? And I'm like, no, I'm not here to take a picture with you. I wanted to come and say hello. Um, I thought you were so fine. Way back when I was like in high school, I've always had a crush on you. And, you know, that's the only reason why. And I told him, I was like, honestly, the only music I listen to really, it's Middle Eastern music. And then he told me some personal information, which I don't know if I should even share or not. It's nothing important, but he just, he shared like something. like had a conversation, yeah. I did, and he shared something with me that he said that, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure as your fan, I would have known that. And he was like, well, no, not really, because a lot of people don't know that. And then I'm like, oh, my God, he's totally hitting on me. <laughs> yeah, right, his girlfriend is fucking uh, Megan Fox. He's good. Two he's later, good. he gets engaged. But he, I give him props because he didn't want to, he, he's so used to it, I think. And what he was trying to imply is ever since he's started dating Megan Fox, he has this whole different kind of following because of her. So I think he's at a point where he's kind of over it, that that's why people know him. And I'm just coming to be a typical, you no, know, he, groupie. I'm sure he got some diehard fans. I mean, his music. Of course yeah. he does. But thing, for though. the yeah. new, the new you know, wave I don't that's music. coming I have in. no idea, but I think he's, he's cool. You know what it dude. is? And I agree with both of you. But the thing is, like with MGK, when he first came out with music, he was a rapper, right? Yeah. He was a rapper, strictly rap, mm -hmm. right? Cleveland, Ohio, diehard rap fan, made a diss to Eminem that went crazy. And then slowly, it's what happens to a lot of these artists he started to die out. His album wouldn't sell anything. Nobody really cared. And I, I'm saying this with all respect because I'm also a fan of MGK. But he made a little random appearance. Well, in Eminem, exactly. Eminem had to show him who he was. Yeah, <laughs> and like for the kill shot, and then like, but and I'm saying both diss tracks were hard, right? And he's such a lyrical hard rapper too, where he started to see decline, and then he changed it up and rebranded himself. Yep. And he rebranded himself as back to his rock star roots. Mm -hmm. And now he's a rock star. He makes rock music. And now he has millions of people watching him. And now, which is so awesome. And a lot of people, you guys know who Young Berg is? Remember mm -hmm. Young Berg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, sexy. Can, remember yeah, all those songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he rebranded himself as a producer now under the 
the name Hitmaker. Yeah. He's made some of the biggest uh, uh, songs that you can think of from the biggest artists, Nicki Minaj, all these people, right? And you wouldn't even have a clue because yeah. a lot of people stopped giving a shit about Young Brick. He was like, you know what? I got to rebrand myself. And MGK was probably in the mindset like, look, bro, nobody started to care about me. All my following started to die out. And now everybody's coming around. So now he's probably walking around with a chip on his little like, bro. Yeah, as he should. As you he know? should. Yeah. Right? As he should. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And he got a really bad little, you feel me, fiance. So well, he was definitely. So he's feeling real big yes. time. Well, he was flirting yeah. with me. I don't I, care. No, I I'm going to say you he know was. Why? I believe it. No, I'm dead ass. I believe was. it. Because I got my, he was like, you know what? You're pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a picture. So we took my picture. I'm That's just saying. That's what I'm talking about. And you know what? <laughs> I heard he's a very, like he came on, a lot of people talking about it on, on the No Jumper podcast and stuff like that. Like, you know, he, he's a flirtatious dude, according to the people that went yeah, on the No well, Jumper podcast. Yeah, well, we love a good gothic. We love a good See, goth. Okay, here. Here's Black where, nails and all. Here's where we drop. I don't know about the whole, okay. I love the edginess, yeah. right? And, and I, I love like love Pete Davidson too, right? Pete, oh Pete's God. clean, and Kim Kardashian is getting ice cream from Rite Aid. I love that. After I love that for trip her. to the outlet malls. And I Kanye West is making out with Julia Fox and Balenciaga, <laughs> who is a fan of Kim Kardashian, who and the family. And the family. <laughs> you know, I I think it's great. Me too, bro. I think it's great. And I love like the edginess, right? Like I love when people go outside of their means. Like nobody would thought in mm. their wildest imagination, Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian would be together for whatever reason. I know I'm I didn't. I never right? did. I could see it. He Thank has God. it. He. Yeah. I know he's his personality is Clean. probably amazing. Clean, right? Yeah. But like you would. Expect somebody to be like, think about all the other people that right. Kim Kardashian. I mean, she did yeah. date Chris Humphries, right? Yeah, r- random weird, ass. Uh, really weird. <laughs> but yeah. like, a lot of people are addicted to that edginess in society, which is awesome. Like, on some, like, you like know, like Courtney the, and her fiance. I mean, Travis Marker, have you seen all the I, TikToks? No. <laughs> Bro, they're so funny. They make fun of Courtney, right? What? To like show, like, yeah. like Travis. Like, yeah, have yeah, you yeah. Seen that? She's so, she's goth now. I'm yeah. sorry. So goth. I was a Blink 182 fan. I was a Travis Barker fan back in the day. I love to see it. I love to see her so happy with this guy. I love happiness. Seeing you know, people happy. I love love. And, and mm-hmm. that's what Megan love. Fox and, you know, MGK have now. And you know what? Kim probably saw that and was like, you know what? Let me spice let me, it up a little. Let me, let me, let me switch it up. Well, no, because they were doing SNL together and stuff. I guarantee you this guy's hilarious. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and for a lot sure. of I mean, bro, he bagged Ariana Grande. I don't, I think he he's so attractive. He bagged all of the baddest She's females so in the game. Yeah. yeah. Think no, about it, bro. I'm but sure like, he got some little, you feel He's a goofy guy. Swag. That's goofy the, guys are the ones, right? So funny. And that's the cool part. But also, come on, bro. You can't be a fool to not know that, like, this edgy shit is, like, very, very, like, popularized. And it's what do you being so edgy. Come on, bro. Wearing somebody's blood on your neck. Telling, okay, let me just. And I know no, Megan, like Fox Megan Fox is Fox poetic. Is, yeah, no, 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 she's talking very about poetic and beautiful, and right? Whips and, and all yes, of this. No, leather. but that's how she is. Fish no, no, nuts. for sure, yeah. bro. But it's like. It's being portrayed heavily. Why wasn't Megan Fox doing this when she was in Transformers? She, well, when she, she was, was not. She was like the 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 beautiful like uh, uh, American. Because she was playing because a she role. Was, because she oh, was but dating. She was never being edgy on any of her uh, socials on the red carpet. She was being gothic on the red carpet. She wasn't. Her? Be, she was married to the guy from Nine Hundred Two One Zero. That's why he exactly. was like a square villain exact, or something. That guy. I remember. Yeah. It, like, Brian, really? I don't even know his name. Brian yeah, but she like wasn't that. being like she was, this. Now she's heavy. In this, I believe that it's authentic. I'm not saying that it's not mm-hmm. authentic, but I also know, just like the Kim Kim Kardashian, and like of course Courtney taking on this like more gothic side. Well, yeah, it that's sells, very clear. bro. It yeah. sells, and everybody knows that, bro. Mm-hmm. And like now, it's like being pushed on thick. Granted, Megan Fox didn't have an Instagram back then, right? She didn't have. She wasn't on social media, but she wasn't portraying this gothic. Uh, thing and there's rebel a YouTube, kind of rebel, a girl. Edgy. I'm well, a heart. Yeah, well, exactly. I did read a few of their articles and like they were both going through like a life, like some heaviness, some darkness, and maybe that shifted their their like. Yeah, and maybe you drink you know, blood. Outlook. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I mean <laughs> do they they drink each other's blood? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay, so this is what she says. Yes, and she's a poet. And shout out to her. Like, she is so smart. Bro, Do you know that? She, she is. She knows her stuff. Beauty and brains, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. a little bit of brewery. So, uh, so we ask for magic. We are oblivious to the pain we face together in such a short period of time. Unaware of the work and sacrifices the relationship would acquire from us, but intoxicated off of the love and the karma, period. Love it. Somehow, a year and a half later, having walked through hell together, 
and having laughed more than I ever imagined possible, he asked me to marry him. Oh. And just as in every lifetime before this one, as in every lifetime that will follow it, I said yes. <laughs> and then we drank each other's blood. You think they actually did? Maybe yeah. that was just part of yes. like end drops and, mic. And for a lot of people that believe in numerology and stuff, they got married on one 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 eleven twenty two. Do your own research. I know about it a little bit. It's super crazy. But think about it, bro. What are people more fascinated by? Why is Playboy Cardi putting uh, upside down crosses everywhere? Why are rappers oh tatting upside down crosses? Why are they throwing up sixes? Why are they doing all this? Because it sells, bro. It gets people talking, bro. Lil Uzi Vert, Lucifer. Come on, G. This is all. It makes sense to me. Yeah. It sells. I yeah. just think you're overthinking. No. I guess so. If you I'm looking at my think. one of my favorite artists put up inverted crosses out of nowhere. And if they I'm drank each other's blood, I'm sure it was like they like it was like a little prop like a drop. Like you know, like cut your finger. I doubt it. I they they look like, like the type to they went and donated blood, then poured it in a cup. No, no they maybe. cut themselves. No, exactly. And yeah. Yep. Vampire I that's style. on style. and Juliet shit. I love it. I with it, Niels, and I hope that in your next relationship you guys drink each other's blood, bro. I don't plan to. This shit is weird to me, okay? It's, it's like, weird. And, I'm with you. Right? It's weird. And I'm weird. just like, I don't know. Trust I me, just couples don't... do more weird shit. Like, Trust me. No, no, for sure. And it but. gets crazy, creepy crawlers, but also it's like, why am I slapping future, one of the goats, and I have to hear demons are coming to your house demons come and get in your soul either that or what he's cooking in the kitchen and that's what i'm saying it's like why are we doing this why 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 do i have to have demons coming from my soul in one of my favorite songs bro <laughs> because it sells it gets people talking bro. yeah uh-huh exactly insanity and just don't overthink it yeah i that's shouldn't it. oh my goodness all right wow it's been an hour yeah dude that is wild mo Hi. Thanks for coming. We love you very much. Mojo. I love Thank you guys so much. On that Thank note, you. don't drink anyone's blood. If you're listening, you can watch us on YouTube.com slash The Dima Podcast <laughs> and stream us on all things at The Dima Podcast. Free Afghanistan, man. Shout out to everybody. I'm sipping some blood. There. Yeah. We love you very much, TDP. <laughs> we out. We out.